Hi boys and girls, um, today I thought I'd start my jigsaw. It's a good day for a jigsaw. And I got this one for Christmas and um, it's a thousand piece. So it's going to keep me going for a wee while during this lockdown. You'll see the picture as well, it's quite tricky. It's a bit of a, an abstract pattern. The last time I did a jigsaw was probably a couple of Christmases ago and it was with my dad and we well, we struggled a bit to get the edges but you know you always start with the corners and the edges and once you get that done it just helps you and, and as you start to kind of build up from the edges and the corners it starts to fall into place doesn't it? All the pieces start to join up together and you you start getting you know getting on really well well that happened to dad and I but unfortunately we got towards the very end and there was a piece missing and it was really hard because we'd worked really hard on it and it just was missing an essential piece and it fell, it just felt wrong, it was incomplete. Well we searched for it and we couldn't find it but um, mum had a look and well you know what mums are like and she found it actually very quickly but she found it down the side of one of the cushions on the sofa. But once we got that piece and we put that piece in and it was complete what a feeling of satisfaction we got from that. Dad and I were so proud of ourselves. I even took a photo. Well, do you remember last week we were talking about Pentecost? And I said I was going to leave the story when um, all the people who had been in Jerusalem and had heard the noise um, and then saw people talking in other languages and heard them speaking in their language... Um, they all were really surprised and they all started asking questions uh, questions like what what is God trying to say what's what's happening here and one or two people started saying oh these people are drunk well the apostles that is the the men who were with Jesus the disciples we is another name that we used to give them um disciples they stood up at this point they were there they were the people who the holy spirit had fallen on they were part of that group they were part of jesus followers had been with him throughout his life and ministry learned from him been there when he did everything all these miracles and stuff like that and did all his teaching they stood up the holy spirit was in them and peter started speaking now i don't know if you remember any stories about peter have a wee pause and see if you can think of any but one I can think on was when Peter, when Jesus was arrested, and Peter got scared and denied. He maybe he said, oh, "I don't know this Jesus guy," and he panicked. He was scared, and well, here he is. He's got the Holy Spirit in him now. He's understood more about Jesus when Jesus appeared to them, and then he went up to heaven. He understood a lot more than he understood at the time when he was scared. And he's really bold and he starts speaking to all the people who've gathered to say, what on earth is going on here? And he starts explaining things to them. And he says to them, you all know your scriptures really well. Because remember, a lot of these people, the people he's speaking to, most of them were Jewish people who, although they came from all over the place, they all would know the Jewish scriptures, which is what we know as the Old Testament in the Bible. And so Peter started by saying, right, here's a few passages, you know them really well, This, that they actually explain and they're prophesying this today, you, you're here, you're seeing in actual fact what ha was told about all these years ago, this is actually happening now. And he started quoting people like Joel in the Old Testament and our Bible, the Jewish scriptures, um, and saying, when, when he talks about God saying that the spirit would come on on people and they would dream dreams and have visions well this is that's this is it now this is it happening the spirit has fallen on um, people and they are going to be given the help to do amazing things for God and he went on to explain how David and the Psalms we know this, this the Psalms the ones with the songs and the poems and um David writes often in the Psalms. We know a lot about him as well. You can maybe pause and think about him for a minute or two. But he talked about Jesus um, dying and 
um, the grave not being able to keep him and Peter starts explaining that that was Jesus they were talking about who was from the line of David who was part of David's family tree um, but how Jesus would die and he would come to life again and how he would save the world through doing that and Peter explained more about that and he started to say um, you know your part you guys in this crowd here you, you you were there when Jesus died you were part of 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 him being killed some of these people who were listening to Peter at this point they would have been the ones shouting kill him at the time and he said you know you've heard the scriptures and um, what he said about Jesus dying about him coming back to life about God sending a saviour and 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 this is Jesus and you're part of God's plan and, and being part of having him killed but God's plan was bigger and he did come back to life again and we know it because we saw it we lived it we've seen Jesus we've been with him and Jesus promised that a helper would be be sent and that's what you're seeing today is the Holy Spirit coming down on us and as our helper and um when he explained this the Jewish people that were there said wow suddenly all the stuff that they knew from the from their scriptures they were able to like pieces in a jigsaw puzzle they were able to join them all together through what Peter was saying suddenly things that were said by Joel and prophets in the Old Testament and what was said by David and the Psalms and it all started piecing together like the jigsaw puzzle and it was all coming together. They could start to understand what they couldn't understand before and they could see how Jesus fitted into it all. And that was actually the piece that was missing for them. Like my dad and I, when we had that piece missing, the piece that was missing for them was Jesus and Jesus was the key piece in the puzzle and the whole jigsaw it built up the picture and they understood now what who Jesus was and and the difference Jesus made and so they said wow we can, we feel we feel convicted what do we do about this we suddenly understand who Jesus is and why he had to die and why he came to life and Peter said to them you need to turn from what you were doing before you need to change from the bad things you were doing all these things you did before you need to basically turn and follow God's teaching you need to follow Jesus if you follow Jesus, you're forgiven and get baptised like Jesus was baptised and you'll receive the Holy Spirit, the Helper, for yourself. And that's the promise. Peter said, that's a promise. It's not just for you and the crowd that I'm talking to. It's for your whole families. It's for your children. It's for the people who are not Jewish, who don't, you don't even know the scripture, you don't even know God to start with. The promise is for everybody who chooses to follow Jesus follow his commands and then they'll be given the Holy Spirit well he kept he kept on explaining he was explaining more and more and more and they were understanding more and more and more but by the end of that day about 3,000 of them thought yeah this all makes sense now we've got the whole jigsaw puzzle now we can see it all we are choosing to follow Jesus we're going to get baptised 3,000 of them that day got baptised and then they all started meeting together from then on like that that was the start of the church they were meeting together they were praying together they were learning more from Peter and and the other disciples who'd been with Jesus they had heard all his teachings they could explain stuff and um, so they were getting the teaching they were just sharing life together they were sharing being family together they they looked out for each other and they shared communion together and they prayed together. And that's where we're leaving it today. Well, I thought in three things you could do today. First thing, why don't you find yourself a jigsaw and sit down with whoever's in the house today and do the jigsaw together. And as you're building up the piece, don't forget four corners first, then try the outside edges. That's always a trick. But see, as you're doing your jigsaw, why don't you chat together about how you learned about Jesus? Find out how your mum and dad learned about Jesus, how they discovered 
the missing piece, Jesus-shaped piece that was missing from their life and ask them about their baptism and ask them about the Holy Spirit and the difference he made in their life. And um, another thing I thought you could do is, well, the, the Jewish people that were there and they were listening, they knew bits and pieces, they knew the scripture, but they just didn't quite understand it all and how it all fitted together. They had questions. What's God trying to tell us? What should we do about this? They had lots of questions to ask, big questions, important questions. And you see, during this pandemic, lots of people have got questions. What on earth is going on? Do you know, it's okay to ask God questions and it's good to share our questions. So I thought today you could maybe get a big bit of paper and you could maybe together as a family write down what questions, big questions you would like to ask God. And it might be as you as you write them down as a family, it might be that someone else in your family can say, well, I think I could explain this to you actually. But it might be some questions you just need to, to be asking God directly. You need to pray about them. And you need to say, God, here's what I'm thinking and I, I don't understand this. And share with God what you're thinking because he wants to hear what you're thinking. He wants to know what your questions are. And the third thing I thought you could do is, well, just be really thankful today. Just have a think about your church family. We have a brilliant family in Knightswood, don't we? And Knightswood Baptist Church is fantastic. There's so, so many loving, kind, good people that care about us and that look out for us and that pray for us. And I thought today you could maybe choose one or two of them, maybe that you've not been in touch with at all since you last were in church. Or maybe you've just not been in touch with them for a wee while. But maybe today you could think in a creative way of telling some people at church that you love them, that you care about them, that you miss them, that you're thankful for them. You might want to call them, you might want to make a card, you might want to bake a cake. You will know a good way of expressing yourself and you might even want to ask them if there's something special you could be praying for them this week. And then why don't you spend some time praying for them, asking God to bless them and thanking God for them. That's what I'm going to do just now, just to finish. I'm going to talk to God. So let's do that. Father God, we just thank you so much for the gift of your spirit, which is a promise. You promised to give us your, your spirit, this your helper, your Holy Spirit, um, when we choose to follow you. It's a promise that was for everyone. It's for all of us. And, and we just thank you for us, uh, for for. Those of us who know you already and who have your spirit, we thank you so much for you in our lives. And we just pray that for those people who are listening that don't know you just now and haven't chosen to follow you, that they will and that they'll know how amazing it is to have you and the Holy Spirit in our lives. We thank you for all that um, the Holy Spirit does to help us. Um, and we just pray that we'll understand more and more about about him and more and more about you. All the questions that we have, Father, we just want to... We want, we want to know more about you and understand more about you and we just pray that you'll help us to do that. And Father, we thank you for Knightswood Baptist Church, our church family. Help us to share life with each other. Help us to show each other we love each other and we care about each other. Help us to remember each other, even though we're not seeing each other the same way at the moment. Help us to remember each other um, yeah, and just bless every one of our church family. We ask these things in your name and for your glory. Amen.